No matter your opinions on Tom Brady, there is absolutely no disputing that he is the greatest quarterback of all time. Now you can debate best, but greatest means the most accomplished. But it got me thinking though, with no more football, I started wondering what his college stats might have looked like. How did he get to the NFL? Better yet, what if I made a really good Tom Brady and put him on the 2023 Michigan team and see how his career would go now after knowing that he is the GOAT. I've set him up as an 85 overall freshman, which I think is fair. Cannot scramble at all and has a pretty low awareness stat to start out. But the kicker is we gave him some really good throw power and accuracy for a true freshman. Now being a Michigan State fan, I don't really like Michigan, obviously. <laughs> credit where credit is due, they have a really, really solid team. So we're going to lose our first game to Central Michigan. Not the start we want for a career. Carrying the momentum from the Notre Dame week, Brady and the Wolverines managed to pick up back-to-back -back wins against Akron and Charlotte, but was quickly met with a reality check after losing a tight-knit game at home to Minnesota to start conference play. Next week, the Wolverines would travel to Penn State, but unfortunately, that would be Brady's biggest loss of the season. But despite beating Indiana the next week in an absolute landslide 40-7, the team that had started the season rank 8 was now 4-3. and three. Now, Tom had thrown for 2,090 yards, he'd thrown 19 touchdowns, but he also had 13 interceptions. We'll put that down to him being a true freshman, though, at such a big school. However, there was one game that Tom could get the fans back on his side. And that was the game against rank 13, 6 and 2, Michigan State. If Brady could travel to the woodshed, knock Michigan State out of the top 25, the whole school would be back on his side. And that's exactly what Michigan would do. The game was super close in the beginning. Brady and the Wolverines went into halftime up 21-0 on the road. And the second half was more of the same, dropping another 21 points and holding Michigan State to 10 points total. Because they were able to upset rank 13 Michigan State on the road, as well as they did, the Wolverines were now back in the top 25. And the momentum from that game would carry over. Extending the current two-win streak, the Wolverines would struggle against Nebraska, picking up only a 14-7 win, then proceeding to pick up a monstrous win against Northwestern, and turning it into a five-win streak, where they destroyed a ranked Iowa, 41-17 on the road. And this was the only rushing touchdown of Tom Brady's freshman season. What a highlight. But even a fairy tale season has to have its downs. At home against Ohio State, who are ranked in the top five, by the way, were up 18-3 at halftime. And I'm not joking when I say Ohio State scored four points in the first quarter. Two safeties. This actually happened on computer simulation. What seemed to be a continuous trend was that Brady was getting pressured in the pocket way too much, forcing him to take really bad reads for minimal gains. They weren't able to string together any offense in that first half. But in the second half, especially the third quarter, Michigan completely turn this game around. Just shy of being in the first minute of the second half, Brady unloaded a 72-yard bomb. And after Ohio State would nail a field goal, the following kick return resulted in a 97-yard touchdown. So then there was four minutes to go in the game. Michigan had seemingly come back out of nowhere and was now down by four points. Sacked again, man. Oh, I think we got him. I think we got him. That's a big first down. Man, this game is actually so fire. Look at his drive. We're driving, boys. Oh, we go backwards. Fourth and 14. This would be insane if I if we could pull this off. Oh, my goodness. He got him. Go out of bounds, please. Go out of bounds. Thank you. I'm terrified. We have antifreeze, though. That is probably the worst time for my game to freeze. Six seconds left to go in the game. The Wolverines take the lead. This truly was a Cinderella story for a true freshman. And because the Wolverines were able to beat Ohio State in that game, that dropped them down to rank eight in the nation and also gave them the conference record edge against them. Now, unfortunately, Michigan would drop the Big Ten Championship to an eight and four, rank 17 Wisconsin team. This is a game that everybody seemingly thought Brady and the Wolverines would take comfortably. And at the time of this loss, the Wolverines were ranked seven. So had they won that Big Ten Championship, they probably get a shot in the top four, maybe make Making a national championship. The season would end on a high note though, as the Wolverines destroyed Maryland. The score was 28-0 at half. JJ McCarthy comes in the second half, has himself a nice game too. Final score is 49-7.
Overall though, Brady would throw for 4,200 yards, which was second in the nation, 38 touchdowns and 19 interceptions. I just want to point out he averaged 1.8 yards on the ground. It was also a very historic season as Brady broke the Michigan record for passing touchdowns in the season and passing yards with that 4,200. All eyes were on Michigan at this point as Brady was the quarterback for the all NCAA second team and they would start the season very much like the last year, being ranked in the top 10. They would face probably their biggest matchup in the very first game of the season. Week two, they were taking on rank three Utah. If they somehow managed to win this game, especially at home, not only would it start the season with such momentum, be the opposite of how they started the previous season losing to Central Michigan, but they probably also jump into the top five. Brady came out the gates on fire. The first touchdown of his sophomore season actually being a scrambling touchdown. And Michigan was up 21-0 at halftime. However, the second half was not the same. Utah would score 21 points on unanswered and have the ball in the red zone less than a minute left would complete a massive fourth down conversion before fumbling the ball on the Michigan eight yard line. And that is when the senior Blake Karam would rush for a hundred yards. The running back who many projected to be on the Heisman list would secure the bag and make rank 10 Michigan one and zero. Now this is where things get a little bit interesting. In week two against Miami of Ohio, Brady went down with an injury in the first quarter. He tried to scramble to extend the play and walked away with an ankle sprain after he'd been tackled and the leg had been fallen on. Of course, JJ McCarthy was ready to step up and proceeded to win a very close game that ended up being 20 to 17. Brady would miss the following three games, but in that time as the starter, McCarthy had racked up just under a thousand yards, nine touchdowns and three interceptions. Granted, none of the teams were ranked, but he did manage to beat Notre Dame and an in-conference rival in Indiana. There was a lot of talk about who would be the starter. Brady, after all, was an all NCAA second team quarterback. And there was no doubt with the coaching that he would resume the starting role once he came back. But if he did struggle against the team that beat him in the Big Ten Championship the previous season, then maybe there would be some doubt circulating internally. Michigan was ranked three, five and zero, and they could not afford to drop any games. Oh well, just let it fly, hold on a second. <laughs> he dropped it, bro. You cannot make this up. Michigan was down 7 to 17 at halftime. The computer has not been doing us any favors. It's another drop. Oh, he's open again. Please don't drop it. Thank he broke the tackle as well. He's out of there. 28 31. However, the comeback was a little bit too late. Brady and the Wolverines dropped their first game of the season. Now, despite losing by three, nobody really thought that this was Brady's fault that Michigan had lost. After all, he threw two balls that should have been touchdowns that didn't end up in 14 points. And he would continue being the starter for the rest of the season. Next up again was their bitter rival, Michigan State. At this point in the season, Michigan State was ranked two in the nation, riding an eight win streak being eight and oh. Brady didn't care though. In the first quarter, he opened up scoring with a 60 yard bomb. And it was no less than the next drive. Junior running back Donovan Edwards took it back 90 yards to extend the lead to 14. Now this would be a back and forth game, but eventually momentum was just too much. Michigan was able to match Michigan State's points and came away with the win 45 to 27. And all of a sudden, Michigan is back on top of the college football landscape. Following up on the Michigan State game, the Wolverines would beat Minnesota on the road, Northwestern and Iowa to give them a 10 and one record heading into the final week. But waiting for them in that final week was without a doubt the biggest game of the season. Quite literally nicknamed the game. Now Michigan did have a slight edge in this matchup. They had only lost one game in the season and that was due to generally sloppy play. The first half of this game was an extremely defensive matchup with the score at halftime being 10-0. In the first half, Brady had 14 completions for 146 yards and a touchdown. Very efficient as well. Blake Rum had also stepped up massively, rushing for 64 yards and averaging five yards in that first half. 
CJ Stroud was not ready to pack the bags though and go home. As in the second half, with up to two minutes left, Michigan had only knocked over a field goal and Ohio State had retaliated by scoring 14 of their own. Michigan had fumbled the ball in the red zone in a time where they were basically running out the clock and could have sealed the deal with any touchdown. And on fourth down with zero timeouts, Blake Karam would rush for three yards, giving Michigan the first down. This first down was all Michigan needed to ice this game. And again, Brady had upset Ohio State in probably the biggest game of his collegiate career. And as fate would have it, rank three, 11 and one Michigan would be facing off against Wisconsin again for the third time in two years, currently with a zero and two record against Wisconsin. But this time things were different. Despite it being close in the first half and Michigan having a 16-3 lead, in the second half, the defense stepped up like they should, held Wisconsin to seven points and ended up scoring nine themselves, one touchdown and a safety. And only in Brady's second season had he beaten Ohio State twice and won his first Big Ten championship. And in probably the most anticipated Final Four in college football history, Georgia would win a close game against Ohio State and Michigan would stomp Michigan State, who was currently ranked three on an 11-1 record. That only loss being to Tom Brady and the Wolverines. In the lead up to the national championship, you could not watch any sports show without seeing some glimpse of Georgia and Michigan. It was everywhere. New Georgia quarterback Brock Vandergriff got Georgia out to a very quick 9-0 lead. Michigan had retaliated quick though, boom, 20 yard dot, 9-7. Brock Vandergriff and the Georgia Bulldogs had come to play though, quickly dropping two more touchdowns on Michigan, making the score at half 23-7. Georgia had come out of half just as hot as they were in the first, quickly dropping another seven for Brady led a drive, finished off by an absolutely gorgeous 30-yard dot, making the score 30-13. Despite how good Brady did, how hard Brady tried, this Georgia team was just too much to break. Unfortunately, meaning Michigan would finish the season with a very respectful respectable 12 and 2. Despite missing four weeks of play, Brady had put up 3,000 yards, 25 touchdowns, and seven interceptions. I definitely do want to point out Blake Karum went off. He had 1,300 yards, averaged 6.2 yards per carry, and definitely was a massive driving force behind Michigan's success this season. Unfortunately for Brady though, this would be a season where Michigan would lose half of their starters. There was no more Blake Karum to bail out the Michigan Wolverines when the pass game wasn't really clicking. This didn't really deter Michigan though, as they'd put up back-to-back -back top five recruiting classes, and they were sitting comfortably at the top of the college football landscape. So despite Michigan losing a lot of really quality players, the players who hadn't left now understood the heartbreak of losing in the national championship, and you pair that with being hungrier than ever, this team was surprisingly better than last year's team. And the college football landscape knew this as well, as even the people responsible for making the top 25 put Michigan at rank four. Now again, somehow Michigan had drew Utah for the second year in a row, and they were again rank five. However, this was a now junior, much more composed, much more relaxed, much more confident Brady that we were seeing on the field. Despite it being close the whole way, Brady never lost focus, put the ball where it needed to be no matter how big of a down it was, and Michigan was able to walk away with a comfortable 31-17 victory. Now, a large reason behind Michigan's success this season was because they implemented somewhat of a dual quarterback system. It was very interesting. You don't really change what doesn't need to be fixed. But Michigan really had this idea that they could keep the defense guessing, which would allow them to score points consistently. And that's exactly what they did. By the time they would verse Michigan State again, who were currently ranked six and seven and oh somehow, they owed the success that they were seeing to this brand new dual quarterback system where Brady would start, pretty much be the quarterback majoritively of the time, but in red zones or third and shorts, JJ McCarthy would check in. And it really put this Michigan offense who had two quarterbacks that were both first round talents, basically maximizing the potential of their offense. And it showed as they were extremely high powered no matter what defense they were going up against. For the fourth time, they would run through Michigan State, the team that they had just beaten in the final four the previous season. However, the unimaginable would happen in the week leading up to the biggest matchup against Ohio State. But the Wolverines would travel to Iowa and drop a game in the fourth quarter, letting up 10 unanswered points, giving Iowa a six point lead. 
I wouldn't say that Brady played bad per se, but he threw an interception in a very crucial time of the game when they could have very easily ran the ball. This interception meant Iowa could kick three points, extend the lead further, and Michigan would never recover from it. Despite Brady's best efforts, Ohio State came out relentless, and by half the score was 21 to three. You could not touch CJ Stroud today. He was insane. Stroud and the Ohio State Buckeyes, simply too much to beat. CJ Stroud had become Brady's biggest collegiate rival at this point. Instead of deciding to go to the NFL draft like he has in real life, he wanted to stay and create one of the best storylines college football has ever seen. The season would end on a high note, however. Many people had Baylor giving Michigan problems, but Michigan went in there and did their what they should have been doing the final two weeks of the season and beat up on Baylor 42-24. With that season, Brady had broken the passing touchdowns for a career with 88 touchdowns. He finished with 2,500 yards, 25 touchdowns, and 9 interceptions. Since Michigan did employ their new offense, McCarthy did have 1,600 yards himself. And you would have to think at this point, you've had three amazing seasons of Michigan. You can just leave now, go to the NFL. But that's not what Brady wanted to do. JJ McCarthy had taken his last snap, which meant now that this was officially Brady's team. And his loyalty paid off as Darius Clemens was now one of the best receivers in the nation. He had a very reliable tight end that he could throw it to and his entire O-line was pretty much seniors and they were ready to go for the national championship themselves. The defense was the most stacked that it had been in Brady's entire career here. Michigan would start Brady's final season, rank eight in the nation. Some say extremely underrated as they should start in the top four. CJ Stroud had moved on from Ohio State, which Brady was very upset about, but getting a very big win against Ohio State would still be the most important thing. Early on in the season, Michigan went up against a 3-0 Northwestern team who was looking to crack the top 25 for the first time in a long time. The game was somewhat close and Michigan started pulling away to end the second quarter. Street repeats itself and Northwestern would come back to score 21 points in the fourth quarter, upsetting Michigan at home. Now lucky for Michigan, this was super early on in the season. It was only the fourth game and if they could win out, including the Penn State, Ohio State, etc, etc, there was a possibility that they were not out of the Final Four just yet. Brady would snap the next week against Coach Prime and the Buffaloes. Though the score was 35 to 21, Brady threw for 400 yards, five touchdowns and zero interceptions on an 86% completion percentage. Brady would go on to beat App State, Purdue and Michigan State before getting an opportunity to not only beat one of their biggest rivals, but to knock off rank one in the process on the road. This win would establish that Michigan is a top four team and should be in the final four. And what do you guys think happened? Based off the history of Tom Brady's career in college, what do you guys genuinely think happened? They were up 35 to seven at halftime. Brady came out on fire. The defense would get a quick turnover and allow Brady to get even more points on the board. And Michigan would not let off the gas either. With the final score being 59 to 28, Michigan. Brady put up a career high 415 yards, seven touchdowns with one interception on 91% completion. He threw seven touchdowns on his own computer controlled against rank one on the road in the snow the season wasn't over though brady still had to conquer nebraska one more time as well as the team that had beaten them the previous season iowa first up was nebraska and they were handled with minimal effort and after comfortably beating iowa as well despite losing earlier in the season to northwestern he had an opportunity to again go to the national championship if he could beat ohio state Throughout the entire first quarter, Ohio State scored three points, but Brady had flipped a switch. Before you knew it, the score was 14 to three heading into half. Ohio State had done all they could to stick around, but they'd already given Brady too much of a lead and inevitably ended Michigan picking up the win by nine points. It was now time for Brady to redeem himself against Northwestern. Now, whilst I do commend Northwestern not only beating Brady in Michigan, making the conference championship, there's one thing we know about Brady. Championship Brady is different. He's like the next level. He's Super Saiyan 2. 
Brady. The score was 35-0 at halftime, and the final score was 45-17. Funnily enough, Brady was also able to walk away with his first Heisman Trophy. He had a total of 4,500 yards and 59 touchdowns. Now, up to this point, Brady had been to a national championship once, where he just wasn't able to beat Georgia, understandably so. At this present time, Georgia is an absolute powerhouse. He gets one more chance at redemption, taking on undefeated rank one USC. Now, USC ran through the season. It wasn't really a struggle. They had close games, but for the most part, they were extremely dominant. ESPN noted that USC came in almost just as strong as Michigan, but they were going to give Michigan the edge. The Wolverines didn't get the start they wanted going three and out, but a beautifully placed kick pinned USC back on the 10. With Michigan gaining momentum, CJ Stokes hit USC with a cheeky juke and made the score 7-0. The Michigan defense forced USC to punt the ball pretty quickly again, and Brady got down the entire field in three plays before connecting with Loveland, the tight end he'd relied upon all season, to give Michigan a 14-0 lead heading into the second quarter. USC would retaliate, put some points on the board, but by half, Michigan had extended their lead 24-7. It seemed like for every time USC would score, Michigan would double that. With the score being 38-14 heading into the fourth quarter, CJ Stokes had racked up 100 rushing yards. With one more touchdown more than likely being the difference in this game, Brady did this. Amorion Walker managed to just get enough separation on that left side and Brady put the ball in the bucket. You cannot put the ball more in the bucket than what was on display on this play. This made the score 45 to 14 with just over four minutes in regulation. USC tried to retaliate but it just wasn't enough. The lead by this point was already too big and Michigan took the approach of simply being able to waste the clock. For the first time in Brady's career, there were highs, there were lows, there were struggles every step of the way. But he was finally able in his senior season to cash in and get that national championship. And fellas, that is going to wrap up our Tom Brady career redo in college football. I had a lot of fun doing this video and it has been a pleasure narrating this for you. If you did enjoy this video, let me know down in the comment section. Leave a thumbs up. It took a long time to record and edit. Made it this far into the video. You are the real MVP. I hope the rest of your day is awesome. And from me personally, I'm out. Peace. Sometimes I'm when they cannot breathe right underwater. Sometimes I'm when they cannot speak in outer space. Sometimes I'm when they cannot call upon a thunder. Sometimes I'm when they cannot.